Welcome back. You're watching Make in India, New Deal for Defence. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're focusing on Indian Defence Forces war horse Ashok Leyland. The company has over 1,500 engineers working on designing vehicles. Jude Sanit caught up with Vinod Dasari, the CEO and Managing Director of Ashok Leyland, to talk about the challenges of the procurement process, innovation and funding of the project. I'm at Ashok Leyland's test facility just north of Chennai and with me is Vinod Dasri, MD of Ashok Leyland. Mr. Vinod, start by telling me a little bit about this facility itself. Obviously, the, the, the defense vehicles that are manufactured just around the Hosur factory are tested here, so to speak, right? Yes, I think this is uh, our test tech center, as you call it. We have more than 1,500 engineers working here. We have the latest technical facilities here in terms of design as well as, as you can see all around you, all kinds of test facilities. We have the manufacturing facility, the production site for our defense vehicles is in Hosur. The design and engineering happens here, but the actual prototyping and ha happens in a secure area just outside of here, which the army required us to create with uh, all kinds of uh, protection so that it doesn't... Uh, uh, show off as to what we are working on at all times. Let's move on to policy for a bit. Let's talk policy. Um, defense procurement policy has obviously been um, the, a topic of much discussion ever since the Prime Minister's ambitious Make in India plan, with special reference to, to, reference to def defense, came up just a little while ago. What are your views on the, on the DPP, the defense procurement policy? I think Is it's a fantastic move by the government. It serves uh, three purposes. It uh, first and foremost significantly enhances the capability of the armed forces, makes it very contemporary. Second, it brings the latest technology in the world and brings it to India. And third, it allows Indian companies to flourish. We, it forces us to innovate and compete globally. What we can make in India for the Indian armed forces, earlier I was talking to you about the rigorous testing procedures of Indian Army. Once you are capable here, you can then sell anywhere else in the world. Classic example is the stallion that you see behind me. Uh, but, um, Mr. Virod, a lot of people would say that in terms of the defense procurement, po defense procurement policy itself, there are a number of challenges that need addressing. The first, of course, is the inordinately long procurement periods that most defense companies, including yours, have had to deal with for the longest time now. Yeah, I think there are two or three flaws that uh, the government is trying to find ways to improve. Uh, not directly the government, but actually the Ministry of Defense and the Armed Forces themselves. For example, from the time of an actual what is called as a GSQR, then goes into an RFI, then goes into RFP, then goes into the technical bid, the trials, and then finally the commercial bid opens. Sometimes it could be a very long process. It could be as much as five to seven years. At the end of five to seven years, even if your vehicle passes, maybe for some other reason the commercial bid is cancelled. Now, you have gone through crores of investment, lots of anxious moments and maybe years of effort and then all of that goes down the tube. That is one problem. The second problem that given the length of uh, some of these uh, trials, uh, I'm not saying that they should be cut short. The actual trial window is, actually, uh, is not the, the one that is consuming the time. There is a lot of red tape that goes on that we can actually reduce and uh, cut short this overall time from the time a vehicle has been provided for trials to the time the vehicle is available. We've had a situation where there was one part that was uh, obsolete. It was an imported part and our partner said that we no longer make this. Now, government or uh, some bureaucrats will say, wait a minute, I trialed with that, did my trial with that, so you must give me that. Now, we are offering a substantially upgraded portion, but nobody will be willing to take a decision to say, how do I change it? So, the, when we approach the minister's uh, office and uh, others in the government, at least now the government is saying, uh, this, this government is listening and saying that, look, we should uh, have an obsolescence policy. So, if something is obsolete and something else is better, let's do a limited trial for this and make sure it is done. But uh, it is issues like that where we have to bring speed into it. Um, that is from a procurement standpoint. But the ability of the government to say that offset as well as make in India, this is really giving a big fillip to the uh, 
local manufacturers. True, and so it's 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 of course encouraging that things are indeed on the road to change. But if you were to look more specifically in terms of Indian defence procurement, the fact still remains that while a lot of make in India is already happening in defence, there's not so much engineer innovate design in India. Do you perhaps feel that it's something to do with categorisation of? Uh, no, of very good question. I mean, out of two lakh forty thousand crores of procurement by the government of India for defence. Would you believe that Ashok Leyland, which is one of the largest suppliers of uh, uh, vehicles to the armed forces in the world, not just in India, we, we compete in less than 1% of that budget. That means most of it was either imported, major helicopters or something like that, or could be routine items like uniforms or something. Uh, but now, I think the government is saying that we need to not only upgrade, Many of our equipment in the world, uh, our old Russian equipment or Russian technology based equipment, it is changing. The vehicle in the, the second from the far right is actually a vehicle which is the base vehicle for a multi barrel rocket launcher. Where we are working with two other partners, we make the base vehicle, somebody else makes the rockets, somebody else makes the, ro the launcher, um, and we integrate it together. This has taught us a lot of things. There was another vehicle where we made where there was a, a partner whose gun was to fire a projectile 40 kilometers away. But uh, they, the army said that, look, we want to have the vehicle face the, uh, the enemy and shoot, which usually people actually for shoot the other way. When you face the army, uh, arm, enemy and shoot, the shock wave from the uh, projectile or the explosion actually collapsed the cab. Which was like, wait a minute, this never happens to us. We have de dealt with frontal crash, side crash, roof crash. But what is this about collapsing the club? These are new things that caused our engineers to learn, innovate, create. In keeping with innovation itself, and you mentioned to me just a little earlier how innovation is one of the favorite activities that happens you know, at Ashok Leyland. Are you happy with the kind of IP creation that happens in India? There's a lot of make in India. You innovate a lot in India. But do you feel intellectual property still has so much more potential in defense? That I, can I be think achieved? there is huge potential. I mean, if you look at the number of patents that just a company like Ashok Leyland has, it's grown up significantly. We have now more than 100 patents. Now, um, or applied for and actually granted to. Uh, defense pushes you to think like that. Because it only if you innovate, you will be able to provide a solution which is more competitive and uh, rugged enough to meet the Army's requirement. And moving forward, um, funding is obviously one of the major issues that a lot of defence companies, especially MSCs, keep referring to in terms of being a major challenge itself. Um, are you happy with the kind of funding structures for defence at the moment as they exist? No, I think there needs to be some change in that. Uh, world over, if there is a massive programme coming, there are companies that are chosen who have the capability to do, and then there is at least some seed funding provided. Today, if there is a large project for which I am developing scores of vehicles that I do testing and piloting and all of that, and after like four or five years, we don't get the order, large company like ours can survive, but lots of smaller, smaller companies won't be able to. I think there should be an element of technical qualification that the company should go through, and then seed funding should be provided. Not 100%. Seed funding should be provided to say use this to get started. L then let the ingenuity and the innovation of the smaller companies also come about in meeting the requirements of the armed forces. Mr. Vinod Dasari, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. My pleasure. Well, that was Ashok Leyland taking us through the challenges faced by Indian companies, including the red tape and delays. That said, the company is going ahead with capabilities to export to global markets and cater to the offset opportunities. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Making India New Deal for Defence. Till we meet next week with a new company in focus, goodbye and many thanks for watching.